Oh, well, I'd just like to say good afternoon to you all and congratulations on getting past what I reckon is the toughest part of the season being pre-season. That's always a massive challenge and um, a pretty tough time, especially when you've got T, I don't know if she's in the room, but um, T <laughs> in charge of strength and conditioning. So I hope she's definitely put you through your paces. You've made the big dance and, and you've got there and then it hasn't worked out. Um, and whether they've been really close games. I think I've, were they pretty close? Yeah. Or? A goal, great. <laughs> um, so we were, we were in a similar situation. We won in 2011, and we had a couple of years of not even making finals. 2013, 2014, we made a waiver in finals, both in Adelaide and Sydney, um, Adelaide and Melbourne, sorry, and we lost both of those games. Tell me if I go over time. Keep going. Um, <laughs> we lost both of those games relatively close. No one, no one remembers who made the grand final but did win. And um, and you know, I remember um, wishing that after that second grand final loss in a row, that we could have just got out and played the next season straight away because you just had this burning desire <laughs> to win and to beat your opponent. And 2016, 2015, 2016, we actually won the premiership. We won the premiership. Um, the first year in extra time, and in the second year we won it in double extra time. We're actually down by I think five or six goals with two minutes to go, which just seems, you know, like a pretty massive feat to come back from. Um, and if I think about what was the success behind those premiership years, um, the success or you know the driving factor was those two grand final losses. Um, and there's no way we would have won those two premierships in 2016, 2015, 2016 if we hadn't experienced those two losses the year before. And, um, and if I can just probably play on one thing from that 2015 grand final, uh, when we were down, I actually remember going, there is no way, <laughs> there is no way we can win this. Like, there's two minutes on the clock and we are, you know, we're six goals down. So everything is against us. And I remember being back at goalkeeper and Beck Bully was at goal defence, who um, was a veteran of the game, just an absolute workhorse, and Claire McMinimum, who probably many of you know, she's a, another Queensland girl, was at wing defence. And Claire was exceptionally competitive and she, she was running back to the transverse line for the next centre pass. And she looked at me and she must have seen that I was a bit down and out and she, she came up to me and she grabbed me and she was like, God, see, we got this, we got this. And she was looking at me and I was like, yeah, we do, yeah, we do, yeah, we got it, we got it. And I remember that moment and I, I say to her now, you know, like that was, that was the turning point of the game. That ball came down and we got an intercept off their goal shooter and we sent it back down and that was the momentum. It gives me goosebumps thinking about it now, you know. And I remember one of their one of their players went down with an injury. She said she hurt her ribs and you know it was just this thing where she got a bit of a tap and she was down and out and that for us was like tick the box, here we come. And um, and rules were that she had actually called two timeouts, so she should have left the court. And I remember going over, you know, in the hype of it all, I remember going over to the umpire and saying, she needs to get off the court, she's off, that's her second time, get her off, get her off. And, um, and the umpire said to me, she's like, you just need to take a breath and calm down. <laughs> and, um, and then all the girls are in a huddle on the court and I walked over and, um, and they're all like, she, that's her second time, she needs to get off, she needs to get off. And I walked over and I was like, you guys just need to get off. <laughs> Sharon Kelly, the umpire after the game, I was like, you played more of a role than you <laughs> The second thing is that you, you've got to do your time sometimes as well. You know, you, you have to sit, you have to sit the bench, you have to sit behind girls that have potentially got more experience that are better than you. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't push them and that you can't be better than them at some point in time. And that is that is the great thing about professional sport because there is nothing else 
that will make you become a better athlete than sitting behind someone desperately wanting that position, but you don't have it yet. That is the only way you will take your game to the next level and the next level, that's healthy competition. By training, you know, by putting out your best performances, by getting better and better every week, you are driving the performance of the team up another level, up another level, up another level. You want to make the coach's job so difficult. You want to make him absolutely pull his hair out every week going, I just don't know who to take. You might feel like bench again, bench again, drop from the team, not good enough. It might feel like it's, you know, a, a pretty, um, like a long time that you've been in that position. And then all of a sudden an injury comes along and then all of a sudden you've had a cracker of a performance and you get that sniff and you get that go and you have an absolute blind of the game and all of a sudden you find yourself in a position that you've been dreaming of for so long. So the thing is that when you do get given that spot, when you do get given that position, you absolutely own it and you think, you know what, if it's injury, you make, you make that so hard for that girl to come back in and reclaim her position. It doesn't matter if she's the captain, doesn't matter if she's the most experienced player in the team. You absolutely get out there and you own it because at the end of the day, you are making the team stronger by just being better and better.